So Meta open sourced a lot of stuff last week, um, kind of a lot. <laughs> they released a meta perception language model, a collaborative re reasoner, meta locate 3D, dynamic bi latent transformers, which is their like LCM models, uh, and then meta perception encoder. And then that last one is what we're going to dive into specifically in this video. And starting off with their paper, Perception encoder, the best visual embeddings are not the output of the network. Uh, I think the best place to start within this is like a, a overview, a visual overview of, of what this is, right? And, and this is uh, kind of the better way to frame it. And then so essentially what it is uh, at the core is that you have uh, images and videos as the, the like main training mechanism, but in order to train on images and video, you also need to train the model on the ability to classify these images and videos and to retrieve them. And then so in order to classify and retrieve images and videos, you need the ability to understand language and then also the ability to understand like spatial reasoning, right? That's like the, the Jan LeCun's big thing is like spatial reasoning within the models. Um, and then so the models include training up front on those two things, right? So like um, uh, training specifically on text and like captioning, video Q&A, ground, textual grounding, uh, as well as different uh, spatial and context. And then within this, there's a few, let's go back to the paper because there's a lot of things that they cover within the paper as far as the, the training, their pre-training, et cetera, right? Um, so bottom line is, is that they're training on both um, on both vision and 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 uh, text based images, right? So it's a, it's a like a full encoder um, in unit that's trained on multimodal information, and then how they train that is kind of unique uh, within their like uh, training and the pre training uh, and how they go through it, right? I'll, I'll point out a few things within this paper. The biggest thing that sticks out to me uh, is the fact that during their pre training process, they notice that it, like scaling the parameters uh, and, and uh, does actually and, and scaling parameters and scaling like image resolution it actually goes hand in hand. And then so they do that, right? And so if you're not familiar with that, when you build um, a, a large model like that, like these models are like like, like like a three billion parameter model, your very first iteration of it isn't three billion parameters. <laughs> you don't just like build the three billion parameter model, right? It's it uh, and train it. It's very expensive to, to train a three billion parameter model. Like you're talking about like millions of dollars of an investment, right? So you don't just you know go like boom, let's just like throw millions of dollars at it and we don't know what's gonna happen, right? You start off with a much smaller model <clears throat> and then you, uh, the, like as small as you can basically get as far as your baseline and then does that work? Okay, then you scale up the parameters from there. Like a hundred, you start off with like a, a hundred million parameter model or a 50 million parameter model and then you go up to uh, 200 million parameters and then, you know, maybe 500 million parameters and then you keep scaling up until you get up to the, the final model where, where you want. And then so during that, scaling and training process, they have found that it's actually beneficial to scale up the resolution along with that, right? Um, and then also too, the other thing is that they, they scale the uh, resolution and complexity of, of the, the training. So they, they treat it like kind of like, like a curriculum, right? Like the, it starts off in first grade and then it, it graduates to like 12th grade by the end, right? And it's the curriculum gets harder and harder and harder uh, as it goes throughout. And then that ends up being beneficial for the model training and uh, what comes out overall. This is like like uh, in here, so the like at 2.1 in this section of the paper, they outline like everything that they do, right? So the first thing that they talk about is that progressive resolution, exactly what I talked about. That's so scaling up uh, up to 4 billion images. Uh, per uh, per uh, stage. Uh, so scaling up the image resolution, uh, also increasing the batch size as well. So not just the resolution of the images, but the batch size of, of the um, training results and that like from 12 billion uh, images to 12 billion samples to 24 billion samples uh, based off of the parameter size. They also introduce and they create what's a call, what they call a LAM optimizer. So they switch from Atom W to LAM, which is known to stabilize a large uh, training models. More importantly, LAM allows us to train stably with a higher learning rate. They increase the final resolution. So, like again, like all of this is going back to me to like it's scaling up the 
complexity of the training overall, right? Anything that they can do to scale up the complexity of their training matters significantly within them. That backs up everything that has no is known around these things so far. Uh, rope. This is like uh, Meta introduced rope method. So like uh, we add 2D rope to each attention layer to improve extrapolation, keeping the original position embedding. 2D rope only improves ImageNet by a little bit, but enhances robustness by a little bit more. <laughs> uh, and then they do attention pooling. Tuned data augmentation, mass regularization, and then they introduce a scaling behavior. So, like a lot that they and, and, and no, they notate this the scaling behavior. So a lot that they, that goes into it, and then it's broken up like into the encoder and the decoder. So then here they're just breaking down what the encoder looks like by itself, um, and then some benchmarks uh, here uh, as far as performance goes. I don't like to like uh, look at the benchmarks. We'll, we'll take a look at the actual performance of the model here in a second. But so uh, overall, this is the, the research paper. And then from here, you get to like a, a bunch of the like um, references and, and like all of their experiments and then like how they, they kind of set up. They give you a lot of good um, analysis and references within uh, here. The uh, I think the last thing to point out within this, and it's probably a very important thing to point out, is that they do also open source within this. Um, one, uh, it's a data set of one million video samples. And then so like it's uh, as far as video training and training a model on video, the, the open source community now has a, a data set that's a uh, one million video samples overall. Um, and then so um, there you go, um, like uh, released by Meta, thank you Meta there. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll just, <laughs> uh, let's go to the uh, notebook here. Uh, so perception models, powerful models for image and video perception. Um, and then so essentially like I, I like to, you know, take um, exactly what they talk about in the research paper and then they give you all of the code here in, in the GitHub repository as well. So for these models, for these kind of um, like these clip models, I, uh, so like I like to play around personally with, with like CNN models and these clip type models and things like that right like these uh image generation models um because it's it's I don't, you know it's cool to play around with and it, there's different functionality uh with them and they're actually they're not hard to set up and to, to play with like like to me these are like um these clip or cnn type models are the easiest type of models to actually set up and play around with i, I like I, I think most people don't know that because they, they don't dive into it at all right um but then so this is kind of how it works overall and then like uh I'll point out like the the interesting th thing to me, and I'll I'll say this like this is kind of like like so how the model is is um this is like the the vision of the model right so like when you're giving it an image of a cat this is what it sees <laughs> and then when you're giving it an image of a dog this is what it sees right and then so it's like 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 um well like oh the model doesn't know between like a like a tiger and a a, a lamp post or whatever it is right like what's well, like yeah because I mean well, this is like I mean this is where we're at at the moment in terms of this technology right like it's it's I think people think it's more advanced than it is like I like uh, the human eye is the most advanced camera that exists in the world right and then so this is where we're at as far as uh, eyes for AI at the moment like it just uh, flat out pointing that out that it's it's not the greatest that they actually see <laughs> like their their vision within this is is not uh complex right um and then so uh oh they have their own collab demo for within this cool <laughs> i just saw this because i just created my own uh collab demo like uh for this as well i'm going to be playing around with these models a lot overall right like i'm interested in in all of their models um that they've released like young lacoon recently said like he's kind of done with lm models overall and then that's um, like and then they release a cache of uh non-lm related works so kind of goes hand in hand there right i kind of agree like i'm in the the same boat as Jan Lacoon in this instance, and then so seeing like a like this just huge cache of models that are not LLM models, it's like it's um, it makes me a lot like I'm I'm excited to to work and to play around with these right, and like not that I will never play around with LLM models, I, like I they get do and, and like uh, that's kind of like a large part of what like I, I get paid to do a lot, you know, but like um, as far as like researching and things like that, like this is my um, I, I'm more interested at the moment in interesting and in researching things like like these types of avenues. So uh, looking at this model, uh, 
to install it, it's like not simple <laughs> to, to install uh, this particular model because you, you have to install like a lot of uh, packages, a lot of reasons, but they, they lay out what exactly you need to do to install uh, here on the, the their GitHub, but it's like um, a lot of packages, you have to do like uh, clone their repository. But I mean, other than that, it's just installing a bunch of packages. <laughs> uh, and then you choose exactly which model that you want to, to do. So in this instance, it's the PE Core L14336. Uh, and then I'm like uh, downloading a sample image. And then so in this in, in instance, it's definitively, it's gonna be a picture of a cat. Uh, I can show you the image here, very much a cat. Uh, and then so uh, we're going to give it a, a cat and then we're going to say, okay, so um, is it a diagram, a dog, or a cat? And then that's what we're going to ask the model, right? Um, oh, and then I should mention <laughs> very specifically, uh, it will ask for CUDA. And then so if you're utilizing this notebook, I, I always change the runtime to CPU just because I don't want it to like be like a utilizing GPU if I don't have to, but so you need it to be on GPU, like 1 million percent, you need it to be on GPU. If it errors, that's why. Um, change it to GPU uh, as far as the runtime, uh, and then that's all you need to do. Uh, and then so it's gonna like, uh, and then like uh, for this, I have it like, the model's gonna output like some, like um, it's labels, which is gonna be like not human readable. It'll just be like, you know, like, I don't know, like here's some probability labels that are like, just like mathematical syntax, right? They, they wouldn't be readable to you. So I, I I make the output readable um, essentially, uh, and then I'm also going to note too. Like so, then the the first time that you run this, like you're going to have to install these packages and then it's gonna like once you install like a whole bunch of stuff and install the the git repository it's gonna ask you to restart the runtime and do it again that's why i have all of this like requirement already satisfied like you you have to do it it's just uh, putting that out um and then so uh it's the available clip models and then we pick the model that we want up there from the top which is this one the pe core b16224 uh, and then we go through, it's loading the model, loads the model fine. If there were errors here, we, it would be actually be populated here. So this is like, no, that's good. Um, and then we get our prediction results. And then it says 100% that it's a cat, right? The model predicts this is a cat with 100% confidence. And then to me, this is a really cool overall to see, right? Like, 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 woo, it's okay. It's a hundred percent. Like we know it's a cat, right? But like, uh, like your typical CNN model isn't going to predict that that's a cat 100%. Like, it'll predict like it's a cat like 98%. Like, and it like, or like 90% even, right? Like, it'd be like 90% the cat, but like 100% cat. Like, okay, beautiful. <laughs> like, this model is 100% confident that it's a cat. Like, I can't get that out of a typical CNN model. So I'm very interested to play around with these models from here, right? And then, so as I mentioned at the top of this video, like they release a lot of different things. And then, so the perception encoder is just one of them, but then from what you can do with the perception encoder, and then you can, you know, couple that with their uh, perception language models, uh, their meta locate 3D, it's a big one, right? So this is like utilizing uh, kind of this technology and then coupling it with with what they're what you are doing and, and what you can do within this is extremely important right so there's a lot of different things that you can do this one is like uh, I'm very interested in playing around with this this dynamic byte latent transformer so they did release and this is the framework for it release a um, 1b and 7b parameter models a 1b and 8b parameter models I have access to the 1b models and and like I just like I haven't been able to uh, get the 1b models fully set up up and running yet like I've run into to just problems with them but like uh, as soon as I do as soon as I get that 1B model up and running like and I'm, I'm able to play with it I'll 100% make a video on it I plan on making again like uh, all of these releases are uh, really fascinating to me because these are brand new architectures <laughs> overall uh, from someone that I like I respect a lot within the AI research community on the coon I would have no reason not to um, and then so uh, overall I, I, I I'm Really cool, uh, really happy with this perception model. Um, and then I'll be making more videos around these uh, models. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.